let's go over some effects that you might want to use in your game. So to begin with, I have an object with the platform behavior installed on it, and a second object with a bunch of animations and animation names, as well as the fire bullet behavior. This sprite object that's just a box is going to act as the actual player, and then the second object is going to be the image of the player. And this way we're able to use tweens and effects and different sorts of things to make the character more interesting without affecting the collision mask of the player. Right now the character is pretty stiff. There's animations attached to moving around, and it can fire a bullet, but there's a lot more that we can do with the character. We do have a video on game juice or game feel, but in that video we show why it's important and not so much how to do it. In this video, we'll be covering a bunch of different ways to add these effects and juice to your game. So to start with, we'll start with a particle effect. So we'll add the particle emitter object, and we could pick one of these nice fancy particle effects that are pre-made, but what we need isn't here. So I'm going to create a new particle effect, and then change the internal values and color, so it'll make sense for what we're doing. We'll set the tank to 1, so it only creates one particle. Remove the emitter force, and then we'll go to the player image object, and add a point for dust. Then in the event sheet, we'll add an event where if the player is moving and on the floor, we'll spawn that particle effect on the first frame of that running animation. So if the animation frame of the player character image is equal to zero, so the first frame of the animation, we'll create the dust particle effect at the point we just created. You need to add quotations, and then select dust. And then do the same thing for the Y position. And now if we preview the game, and walk around with the character, we'll be spawning the dust particle at its feet. But, it's spawning per frame. So we'll add the trigger once condition. And we'll change the size of the particle. But if you want to have something that's animated and acts like a particle, you don't need to use the particle emitter. You can actually create a sprite object and just delete it when the animation's finished playing, and that way you can have an effect that also plays an animation. So if I import the muzzle flash image, Then I can go to the event where I'm firing the bullet, and spawn that image in when we fire the bullet. And in this case, I already have a point made called bullet spawn on the character, so I'll be using that for the position. And then I can just check if the animation of that effect is finished playing, and then delete it if it is. The direction needs to be changed. So we'll need to use the direction that the character is flipped as the condition for this effect. Because the muzzle flash's image is off-center, it's not going to flip properly. So, we'll add another point to the character image object, and use that as the point for spawning the muzzle flash. And we'll have to change the position of the origin to the center of the object. But then we need to change the point to the newly made muzzle flash point. And that's lasting in the scene as long as the animation timer is set. So if I set that for 5 seconds, it would last for 5 seconds before being deleted. Then there's the Paint Shaper tool. 
which has a ton of uses, and in this case I'm going to use it for a shockwave effect. So I can go to the behavior section of this new object and add draw shockwaves in ellipse. And now we'll add an event where if the bullet collides with an enemy object, we'll create that shockwave effect by creating the paint shaper object at the point of collision. And deleting the bullet. And with some tweaking of the values inside the shockwave behavior, it's a really quick way to get some effects into your game. Another useful set of tools for effects in your game are tweens. So I can add the behavior for tweens to my player object image, and then I'll use the tweens to add some squash and stretch to the character. So using the action tween the Y scale of the object from the center of the object to 0.8 when they first land on the floor, and then when that landing tween is finished, changing the scale back to 1, will make the character squash down when they land on the ground, and then bounce back up. And you can complement this by doing the opposite for the X scale, making it expand out, and then retracting the other way. And make sure to give tweens different names so they don't overlap each other. And now when the character lands, they land with a satisfying little bounce. And then the last really important effect to know is camera impulse, especially for a game with a gun or directional force. So we'll look up and install the extension for impulse, camera impulse. And then when the character fires the bullet, we'll use the action for impulse and then set the values. And then for this kind of game, you want the impulse to be in the direction that you're actually shooting in. So we'll use this flipped event and have one set to go at 0 degrees and the other one to go at 180 for the other direction. You don't need to use every kind of effect in your game, but all of these little touches really add up to make the game look a lot more polished than it was to begin with.